All right. Does everybody see it my screen? It. it got it. Yes. Okay, perfect. So, uh, so this talk is about making the butter cow. Uh, all of the complications, all of the interesting challenges, and a little bit of the history of butter sculpture, which um, this might be a little bit of a spoiler. We did not invent butter sculpture with the butter cow. Sorry. Um, so let's, let's move forward. Thanks, Aunt Bonnie. It's a lot of house. I hope you can keep it clean. Uh, so who am I? We're not home and car insurance, easy. I am oh, Teddy. Angela Wise. As Catherine uh, actually wonderfully introduced, thank you for that introduction. Um, I'm a freelance artist and a teacher at the St. Louis Artists Guild. It is actually an absolute joy uh, for me to teach because while it may not be marketable or profitable, I think that everybody has creativity inside of them and that all of you, whether you believe it or not, have the capability of making your own butter sculpture. Uh, maybe not a butter cow, but at least a sculpture. So I'm gonna talk about that. Perfect. Okay, so a um, little bit about the history of butter and sculpture. Uh, like I said, we did not invent it with the butter cow. Uh, it's actually quite old. Uh, the first documented butter sculpture was in 1500. So it has been around for a while. Uh, you see the top image here this is a sculpture by Carolyn Brooks, Dreaming Lalanthe. And this was before refrigeration was widely available, but it took off. Everyone was so in love with this sculpture. It was around, uh, it was late 1800s. And they kept it cold by keeping ice underneath it and they kept fanning it. So it was absolutely bizarre but people fell in love. Butter sculpture in the United States was most popular around 1900. Um, this is around the same time that refrigeration became uh, most widespread. So between maybe 1880 and 1920, butter sculpture took off. Now, for our sake, butter sculpture in the state fair and our butter cows uh, started with the very first butter sculpture, which you see here in the image in 1903. Now it wasn't Missouri that started it, it was Ohio, um, but this sculpture right here with uh, a cow, a calf and a little boy is the first one. And the goal was to promote dairy. And while they did that, they did something else. And what they did was create one of the most exciting attractions at the state fair. Now that might be a little dramatic, but if you think about what the state fair means to people and how important the butter cow is, I would argue that it's one of the main attractions at the state fair. Okay, and next slide. Oh, I'm going to let this set in for a second. Uh, this piercing gaze of the Mona Lisa gets me every time. So here's a couple examples of some contemporary butter cows that have been at the Missouri State Fair the last few years. Um, each fair has its own theme. And oftentimes the butter cow will try to uh, parallel that theme. Uh, so we have the Mona Lisa, and we have this cow reaching through the fence. Um, the bottom right is a cow celebrating the 100th year of the Missouri State Fair. 
So the first Missouri State Fair was in 1901. So in 2001, they had the 100 year anniversary, which is shown right here. And next slide, please. So this year's theme of the Missouri State Fair is the bicentennial of when Missouri became a state. So in 1821, Missouri became the 24th state. So this year, uh, the state fair starts around this exact time on August 10th. We are going to celebrate that. So on our end, uh, we're also going to run parallel with this celebration and this theme. And we're gonna celebrate the history of dairy in Missouri. So from 1824, when we became a state, and 1901, when we had our first state fair, there's actually a lot of history that we can celebrate. Um, so, uh, next slide, please. What is this? Look at this absolute beast of a cow. So, Cows are very different today than they were in 1901 and in, in 1824. So they, this you can see, they were quite a bit shorter. Uh, they weren't as uh, defined as they are today and their dairy production wasn't as great. So uh, the next slide, if you could, has the comparison. So on the left, we have a contemporary Holstein cow. And on the right, we have the kind of cows you would have seen around the turn of the century. So the left, the Holstein, which I took from uh, Dairy Discovery Zone, shows you can see they're much taller today. The bone structure and the muscle structure is quite a bit more defined. And if you look at their udders, their milk production was mu is much more prolific today than at the turn of the century. Now, if you look on the right, we see much smaller cows. Um, so their legs are not quite as big and they look rounder. And that's because their structure is not quite as defined. So, I can't officially show you the design for this year's butter cow because it's a secret, uh, but I can tell you that this is part of the inspiration and you'll see that when I show you the cow in the freezer. And today, they, thank you. Um, we're gonna talk about what goes into making a butter cow. What goes into large scale uh, sculpture? Now, <laughs> measuring twice and cutting once is the theme of this cow. It takes so much planning to do a sculpture this large. Now, I'm gonna talk about designing, sizing, uh, some restrictions and challenges that I ran into, materials, and just some basic steps that if you were to make your own sculpture, you could do it. I do want to make a disclaimer that I am an art teacher and I take it very seriously. So all of us learn and process information differently. And uh, if you are a teacher yourself, you'll know that there's different types of learning. There's visual, there's auditory, there's reading and writing and kinesthetic. I am mostly a kinesthetic learner with a little bit of visual thrown in. So I process information, uh, very hands-on, very going through the motions, so my process for making a butter cow might be a little bit different than yours. So for example, I have a friend who is reading and writing based 
And even though we may have the exact same thought, we may come to the exact same conclusion, we come about it in very different ways. So I'm going to try to keep that in mind as I'm talking and explaining uh, my process to you. So we know that we want to make a cow that is based in celebrating dairy, celebrating Missouri, and getting a little bit of history in here. So I'm not gonna show you the design for this year, but I will show you the design that I made for last year uh, in 2020. So if you could, next slide. <laughs> so yes, this is a very rough design. Uh, the fair was canceled before I got too far into it, but this is just the very start, an initial concept. So being a visual person, I had to sketch it all out. And uh, this, sorry, it's so silly. This is the year of clear vision, 2020. And you can see these cows with very large uh, cartoonish glasses. And uh, it would have been fun, but the, the fair was canceled due to the pandemic. But this is just uh, an initial step in doing your design in creating your ideas. So after we do all this, um, mapping out the different sizes, the different pieces you'll need. Um, next slide. There we go. And so that leads to our armature. So armature is just the base uh, of your sculpture. So if you look in the top left image, that is a quarter scale wire model that I did to try to figure out all of the attachment points for my armature. Uh, it, it doesn't look like much, but being a kinesthetic learner, I had to actually physically build the armature to understand how I would need to do it. So my uh, small wire sculpture actually went a long way. Now armatures in general, can be built out of almost anything, um, wood, tin foil, wire, PVC pipe, you name it. Now for this structure, I had uh, some challenges and some restrictions. The most difficult one being that I had to transport it from St. Louis in my basement specifically to the state fair. So it had to be very light. So wood and uh, metal rods were all out. I also had to be able to bend it. So armatures act like the bones of your sculpture. In this, in this case, quite literally, um, you'll notice that a lot of the shape follows the curvature of say a rib cage or in the back a pelvis. Um, I did add a few extra components. For example, on the base, you can see the X to help give it a little bit more support as well as the crossbar. Now with the armature, I need to direct the weight because I can't have it collapsing. So the entire base is built to direct the weight down to these itty bitty legs. And cows, uh, unpopular opinion, do not look aerodynamic. <laughs> All of this weight is on these tiny legs. So to give myself a little bit extra security, there is actually concrete inside each of these legs. So that just gives it uh, that extra strength to make sure it doesn't crack or bend. And so far, uh, at this point, I have about 230 pounds of butter uh, and it has not collapsed. And I will get all the way up to 715 pounds of butter on this structure, which is a lot. Uh, so I just wanted to make sure that it was going to hold it. And if you could, next slide. <laughs> oh my goodness, butter. So this is actually an outtake 
uh, for an image I was trying to take for this talk and marketing it. And this is an outtake because this chunk of butter is 55 pounds and it started to slip out of my hands, out of my hands. So this is, this is a big chunk and it's one of, I think 12 that I have to go onto this cow. Um, so working with butter has been a delightful experience my experience in sculpture up until this point has been with clay. And if any of you have worked with clay, to make it malleable, you add water. So you can form it. Um, if you add a lot of water, you can create slip, which helps to put two pieces of clay together. So butter follows the same concept, but a different execution. So instead of adding water, to make it malleable, you change the temperature. So a uh, little bit of an anecdote, when I started working on this butter cow, I didn't realize the temperature was 45 degrees. So I built up the whole side of a cow and turned around and came back to the cow and the entire side of the cow fell off. Needless to say, that was a little traumatic for me. So I checked the temperature, I corrected it. So now we're working in the right uh, freezer temp, which is between 35 and 40 degrees. Um, so how do I get the butter malleable? You can set it out of the freezer and let it uh, get to room temperature and bring it back in. There's also your body heat that can make it a little bit easier to mold, but you could only do about a handful at a time. Now, for me, being the kinesthetic person that I am, uh, heat gun baby, so uh, attaching it, um, molding it, making it easier to work with, and also just making me feel powerful in general. Um, <laughs> so out of mandatory tools for making our butter sculpture is our armature, our freezer, and for me in particular, heat gun. Uh, it makes it go a little bit quicker. And then just a few smaller tools uh, for breaking up the big block. Uh, there's a couple actual gardening tools I have, um, some smaller carving tools, and that's pretty much it, some good tunes. Uh, the last little note I'll say about butter is that my hands have never been softer. So dealing with this butter, uh, my hands have just been uh, moisturized and it's been beautiful. So next slide. Yeah, so look how cool this is. So you see the armature with the chicken wire uh, at about quarter inch holes on the left. And the armature, so the bones of the sculpture inside. And on the right, we have, this is maybe about the third layer of butter. And it doesn't quite look like butter sculpture that you've seen before, uh, partially because it's not done, but also because to do the butter sculpture in the way that I had to do, it is hollow. So being hollow, I had to inch by inch put butter into the chicken wire. So each of those indents is my thumb pushing that chicken wire into, excuse me, pushing that butter into the chicken wire. And I'm about to tell you the hardest part of doing this. So because it had to be hollow, I had to leave it alone in the freezer after each layer to let it chill and solidify. If you've ever done any creative project, you know leaving it alone is easily the hardest part. But after each layer freezes, it's stronger and you're able to build on top. Now, had I gone directly into it with the heat gun? Oh, forgive me. 
that was a car driving by, um, it would have melted off or it would have fallen off and I would have had to go through more trauma of putting it back on after that. So here you can see the butter starting to build up and you can also see my absolute favorite part. And that is forming the muscles and forming the structure. So you can see the haunch uh, starting to form in the back. You can see the rib cage starting to expand outward. And compared to the flat nature of what the armature is, it's honestly so much fun. So let's go to the next slide. Research. So I have learned more about cows in the last year than I have in my entire life. So here you see um, a cow on the left, which is a 3D model, which I've used for a lot of my research and a lot of my freezer time because I can see not only the muscles and the definition, but even the skin, uh, which once it's smoothed out, skin is still wrinkly. There's still little bits of cow that bunch as the cow moves. And so on the right, we can actually see, uh, actually from right to left, which is a strange decision, but the bones and then the muscles built on top of those bones of the cow and then our fully formed cow. Now, this is so important, especially with this year's theme of celebrating the history of the cow. I need to try to get the cow as accurate as possible. Now, with my focus of early cows in Missouri, if you remember, the Holstein didn't get to the United States until about 1850. And it took even longer for it to get to Missouri. Uh, as you know, we're in the middle of the country. Uh, so we did not have this prolific milk producing cow. We had this chunky boy. So the muscles are still the same. Uh, the proportions are a little different. So if you see here, what we need to take from this is something called bony landscapes. So bony landscapes are the parts of the skeletal structure you can see from the outside. So the pelvis, uh, you can see it coming out, yeah, on the back. Or for example, the shoulder blades coming up to the spine of the cow. And forgive me, I do not know the name, but if you look at the top of the skull, whether it is a horned cow or a non-horned cow, it still has that bump at the very top of the skull. So all of these are very important in doing your anatomy of your cow. So if you think back to when I was talking about different types of learning, you've seen the kinesthetic part, but let's look at the visual. So if you could, next slide. <laughs> so this might be overwhelming for some people. Uh, this is a 3D model in 360 degrees of a cow. And I have stared at this so much. So what this does for me is I'm able to really see this cow. And as I am sculpting, I can understand how these muscles are moving. Um, so this is really important for me and my type of sculpture. So before I go on to the next slide, does anybody have any questions for me? Okay, it looks like no. You would uh, have to put them in. I do have everyone muted. So if you do have a question, you'll have to unmute yourself or add it to chat. Okay, so I'll keep an eye on that chat if anybody wants to add anything. Um, so I have a treat for all of you today. So the title of our cow is set in stone. However, everyone that joined the talk today gets to help me name the cow. So if you could, next slide. 
So everybody put in the chat what you want us to name the cow. Uh, Mui and Pauline are the names of the cow examples from the 1800s. Dolly Parton is just delightful. That's Dolly Parton. Uh, Bessie's a traditional cow name. And Minnie the Moocher, just because it made me giggle. Uh, so go ahead and put that answer in the chat. And I'll keep an eye on that and we'll, we'll name our cow. So that is your reward for joining me today because I am so grateful to have you here. Um, so before I stop the slideshow, I am going to give a big thanks to, <laughs> uh, big thanks to the people that made this presentation possible. Um, so that's the St. Louis Artist Guild, uh, my employer. So I am uh, biased, but what they do is, <laughs> oh, it might be many of the moocher, everybody. Uh, so what the Artist Guild does is it makes art accessible. So people can show their work. People can see art. People can take classes. So uh, I'm going to have their information at the end of this slideshow, but definitely check them out. Even if you don't live in St. Louis, we have virtual classes. And I would really, I really think that if you're interested in the Butter Cow, you'll be interested in the Artist Guild. And next slide. The other organization that made this presentation possible is Midwest Dairy. Um, so I don't mess this up. I'm just going to read it. Uh, the Midwest is home to thousands of dairy farmers who are committed to providing nutritious, wholesome milk and dairy products. They share a great responsibility as stewards of land, resources, and of course, their cows. So uh, if you could, the next slide. Here's everybody's information. Here's my uh, goofy marketing photo with my uh, cake decorating uh, spatula. And here is the Artist Guild information. Here is Midwest Dairies and mine. So if you want to contact me for any reason, um, hopefully all good things, you can email me. And let's, let's see if we... <laughs> it looks like Minnie the Moocher is winning out. Uh, so I'll double check that before the end of the presentation, but I have one last treat for you today before I go into the freezer, and that is images of past year's butter cow at Missouri. Uh, so if we could, next slide. <laughs> so here we have the Mona Lisa. Yeah, next slide. Oh, okay. I think all the rest of the slides are blank on here, Angela. Oh, okay. So it looks like they did not attach. So I will, um, if anybody wants to see those, I will email them to you. Uh, they are pretty cute. Um, so let me go into the freezer. So Jess, if you could stop sharing, my lovely assistant. Hello, everyone. So hopefully you can see me. I'm going to check. All right. Minnie the Moocher won. So that is the name of our cow, though we did have an adorable write-in, uh, Cowabunga, <laughs> which was very cute. Um, so I'm going to go inside. If you were here at the beginning, you know that... Uh, the freezer isn't great for reception. So if I lose you or disconnect, I will come right back out. But I'm gonna show you the cow and I'm also gonna do a little bit of an ear for you. So you can actually see, so you can actually see butter sculpting in real time. So let's go on a journey together. She's good. She's a teacher, she's a good yeah. teacher. All right, so let me show you this. Turn my camera around. So here we have 
the butter cow. So we have the haunch. You can see it's about four to six inches now. And so I'm gonna go in the freezer to give you a better view, but I wanna to try to do it now, just in case I lose you. All right, everybody cross your fingers. I'm going into the freezer. Oh, well, I guess you have. If we lose you, Angela, we'll wait for you to come back. Okay. Didn't know you were going on a journey today, huh? It's a walkabout. <laughs> it's a walkabout, yeah. All right. So here, we have a giant chunk of butter that I have been whittling away at. Um, and then we have our cow. It's on wheels, so I can move it back. So you can see every little hand print in here. So this is a labor of love. So I'm gonna push it back a little further. So you can start to see where this haunch is starting to form. And the anatomy here, so we have our leg, and then this is just an extra flap of skin that folds over our, mil our milk down here. And then we have our rib cage. So that's what this form is. Can you tell I'm an anatomy nerd? So all of this has a structure and a meaning underneath. So I'm gonna go a little bit further back. Yay! So look at this baby. At this point, it is, Two, 220, 230 pounds of butter. All of this is hand applied, except for when I went power hungry and got out the heat gun. And I left part of this open for you. So I'm gonna go to the side and show you what the inside looks like. We have, this is the most, this is the latest part of butter that has been applied. I did this last night. So you can see painstakingly, lovingly, bit by bit. But I'm gonna get up here. So you can see inside. Slowly but surely, inch by inch, we are putting butter inside this baby. So, a little bit. Angela, how many hours a day are you working on this and when's the completion date? That's a great question. So how many hours a day am I working and when does it need to be done? And when is the state fair? So the state fair uh, opens right around the bicentennial. So it'll be around August 10th. And I am working about 14 hours a day. Uh, I do take lunch breaks. <laughs> and I do have to go outside uh, and warm my feet up. Um, when I first started, my feet actually, my toes actually turned blue. So I had to uh, change my schedule. So I have to take pretty frequent breaks. Um, but yeah, I will say that my hands are a little tired from pushing in all that butter. But it is going to be worth it. I am in the freezer until Monday. So it needs to be done on Monday. But, uh, so well, you have a lot of work to do by Monday. <laughs> Don't remind me. <laughs> <laughs> um, Are you wearing your winter clothes? Uh, 
in the as you're working? So I have about five layers on in the freezer. Uh, because one, I'm a baby and I don't like the cold, but also staying in here for so long. Um, I have about three pairs of socks on and long johns. Uh, Cynthia asked, what do I have on my fingers? So I have place. So let me. So what these are are finger coverings, because as you can see, uh, working with the chicken wire is slightly dangerous. Um, so there's been, uh, more times than I would like to admit that I have been moving butter and cut myself. So this is just to keep these band-aids on. <laughs> so that's what those are. Um, yeah. So butter is surprisingly really easy to work with as long as you're patient. So it just takes a little time. Um, is there anybody in here that plans on going to the state fair? Well, I might drive down to see you. I might drive in to see your butter cow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think it'd be great fun. And what I'll do is I will have a final image uh, that the St. Louis Artist Guild can post on their site of the finished cow. So even if you can't make it to the, oh, thank you, Madison County. Yep, and, and my mother-in-law, hello, I love you. Uh, <laughs> so even if you can't make it to see the cow in person, we will have an image for you uh, so that you can see the cow even if you can't get there. Will you be doing any talks or lectures during the fair as, as all the fair goers are coming uh, great through question. and by? So my only talk I'm doing this year is this one. And next year, if they re-sign my contract, which I'm enjoying this so much, I hope they do, I'm gonna try to convince them into letting me do a mini butter sculpture demo for everyone. Uh, which mentioning, let me show you. I have an ear for you. <laughs> so I'm gonna grab this and walk out of the freezer. <laughs> I'm not quite covered for the freezer yet, so I'm a little chilly. <laughs> Let's turn this around. Okay. So I have one last treat for you. And that is, let me set this up. That is an ear. So I have this little baby. And this is just a mini version of the cow. So this is the armature right here. This is just armature wire. And then we have our uh, chicken wire put on top. So this is an example of what you would need to push the butter into. It's already formed. And because we come with two ears, I'm gonna show you what it looks like. So here is the first pass. Oh gosh, here we go. Here's the first pass at an ear. So this has all of the butter pushed into it and the wire is attached as so, so I can just bend it and stick it into the cow. Uh, this is because if I were to just build up the butter on top of the cow, it would most definitely fall. So we have our own little delicate structure, uh, which gosh, look how big this baby is. <laughs> so we have this uh, to do. So I'm gonna do just a little bit to show you what it's like to work with butter. And I'm gonna do it out here so you can hear me just a little bit better. Give me one second and I'm gonna go grab some butter. Isn't Angela wonderful? She is such a great lecturer and uh, instructor 
for the St. Louis Artists Guild and for her to not just talk about uh, sculpting today, but give us history. I greatly appreciate that. That was really fun. Oh, well, you're welcome. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, a, I'm a learning nerd. So here <laughs> is a chunk of butter that I have to uh, manhandle uh, to get little pieces off. So this is easier to manage so that I can uh, hold it and work with it. And what I'll do, you can just see, is break off little hand-sized pieces. Oh my gosh, okay. So for all of you artists, you crafters, you art teachers out there, or just teachers, I'm about to tell you an unpopular opinion. Butter is worse than glitter. It gets everywhere. <laughs> my my freezer clothes are covered and when I break it apart there's eight pieces that just fell off so and it's sticky <laughs> so it gets everywhere so sorry distracted so here's our ear so what I have to do is take pieces about this big and push them into this chicken wire. Now, I try to not touch it once it's been pushed into the wire. Because if you remember, the part of butter that makes it solidify is the cold. And the more I touch it, the heat from my hands gets into the butter and it's easier to fall off. Um, and it won't stay. So once I cover this entire thing, just one thin layer, I put it back in the freezer or I'm working in the freezer and I leave it alone. So then I have a hard layer of butter to work on top of. So I'll put one more little piece in and just inch by inch, putting it in here. And you can see that the chicken wire has a few hard edges and that's how I've cut myself a few times. Um, so if you do this, I recommend you uh, make your armature a little bit safer than I did. Now, if you were to do this at home, you can take some tin foil and make it into the shape of whatever it is you're trying to sculpt. So, Let's say you're having a big dinner party and you know the way to wow your guests is a butter sculpture, which is a big part of butter sculpture tradition is having a fancy thing of butter in the middle, uh, almost like an ice sculpture. So we'll say you wanna do an, a butter sculpture um, what's something fancy? A peacock. So you're gonna do a peacock sculpture. You don't necessarily need this chicken wire. The chicken wire is because I have such a large hollow figure. For something smaller for your dinner table and you're doing a peacock, you can form it uh, paper and then cover it with the tin foil. You need to seal it because butter is, I just dropped a bunch, because uh, butter is moist. So once you have the shape that you want, you can do exactly what I'm doing. You can make your peacock covered in butter. So you can see this takes a bit, but we have our little fold over for our ear and I'm gonna grab my other ear. So here, step one is the armature. Step two is our first layer. Let me grab our other ear. Okay, so here is our ear that we have done our initial layer of butter on and then a couple more layers. So you can see it's a little thick. And I don't worry too much about smoothing it out until the very end uh, because if one thing changes, 
I'll have to do it all over again. So I'm just waiting until the end, but uh, let's say for our sake for this talk, that this ear is completely done. It's perfect. Honestly, it's too perfect. No cow is this perfect. Sorry, I'm very dramatic. Uh, okay, so comes in our second tool. So this is just a pottery tool. It's a little piece of metal that you can scrape and smooth out. So let's see if I can do this. So it's just taking this and smoothing our little butter ear out, which is actually really hard to do backwards. But doing this, you can see starting to smooth out and be a little bit closer to what you've seen on other butter cows. So this is quite a bit smoother. And what I'll do uh, once the entire thing is smooth is add in some of those folds that we saw on our 3D model. So no skin, like no ear, is perfect. So we wanna add some of those imperfections in. Uh, but we got to get smooth first. So going through all of this, which I'm sure you've noticed, also takes some time. So all I'm doing is scraping off the bits that are sticking out and filling in the holes. And repeat, repeat, repeat over a cow. So towards the end of it, our cow is going to have 700 pounds of butter on it, every inch going through this process. It is a labor of love. Sorry, I can't take myself seriously with that on, but it's gonna look great in the end. So again, keep track of the St. Louis Artist Guild's Instagram so you can see the finished product or visit the Missouri State Fair so you can see it in person. We make sure there aren't any questions. Oh, some people are going to come and see it. How wonderful. Angela, have you yeah. talked about whether the cow will remain in that freezer to be viewed or will it have to move somewhere when you're done? That's a great question. So the questions I've gotten a lot here lately are, do you have to move it? Where's it going? And what happens after the fair? So I'm going to start with the most traumatic answer. So what happens after the fair is they scrape off all of the butter and they save it for the next year. And then they throw the base away. <laughs> wow. So part of that is a health thing because it's partially covered in butter. Um, and I'm going to tell you right now from, from working in butter, it doesn't come off. So there's no way that's coming off of the frame. So it just gets thrown away. Uh, the butter is saved though. We're able to use it for about two to three years. And then does it move? Lord, I hope not. That's why I'm doing it in the freezer. So it's gonna go right up against that window so people can stop by and see it. And there's also that outside window where uh, if you're not on Zoom, you can peek in and see it. It could arguably move. There's wheels on it, um, but it is very difficult and it's gonna get increasingly difficult as I add more weight. Um, because even the bottom layer, the ground is gonna have butter on it. So that's even just an extra two inches all the way across, which is gonna equate to maybe about 20 pounds. So it's a lot of butter. So thankfully, it doesn't have to move. It's gonna stay right where it is. <laughs> yeah, does anybody else have any questions for me? Well, I think we yeah. might have to have a Thanksgiving dinner table, butter sculpture <laughs> centerpiece competition, enter on Zoom so we can do it from around the state and beyond. Okay, so that's gonna Great happen. Idea. <laughs> Stay tuned. We'll do a little butter sculpture uh, for Thanksgiving. Um, I'll leave you with one last anecdote before I leave. Um, you may think that I'm going along with the theme with this handkerchief in my in my hair. Um, no. So I found out after a couple days in the freezer 
my hair was getting very greasy, which normally it takes about three days for me to get gross. And I realized when my butt, my hand, my hair would get in my face, I'd move it out of the way. And so by the end of the day, uh, my hair was covered in butter. Which I'm just, I'm just going to come out straight with you. It's gross. So this is me saving my hair from a butter conditioning. Uh, so stay tuned. Uh, we're going to post the picture and Catherine and I will get working on how to have a centerpiece for Thanksgiving out of butter, which is the cutest thing. Um, and as long as we don't, no, nope, we don't have any more questions. I am so grateful to all of you, um, not only for joining me today, but helping me with the incredibly difficult decision of naming our cow. So Minnie also thanks you. Because without you, she wouldn't have a name. So thank you for joining us, everybody. And Catherine, if you have anything else to say, it's all yours. Uh, thank, thank you. This has been wonderful, informative, entertaining, as always. So this is why so many people follow and take Angela's classes. So thank you for promoting the Artist Guild and the Midwest Dairy Association. And this has been great. And everybody hopefully can make it to the fair. Angela, this was fabulous. I enjoyed it so much. I've uh, taken your classes before and you are an amazing teacher. I am so impressed with how you are achieving this project. I'm, I'm just in awe. So, and it's great that you're enjoying every step of the way. I really am. Minus the whole glitter thing. This has been so much fun. Uh, and I'm so glad that I get to share it with you. Thank you, Cynthia. It's a pleasure to have you in class. It's my, it, you're my gift. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, everyone. All right. Thank you, everyone, for joining in and uh, follow us on Instagram or the Watch the Missouri Fair to see Angela's progress. Everybody have a good afternoon. Thanks, Catherine. All right.